Thanos. Sends up a journey. They is still Brooke. Look for the bare necessities, which means not a live action remake. Alrighty then. I got no idea how that song goes. <laughs> also joining us today is Terra. You will never get my money. Sure, it's a new live action of well, some of them are, but you'll never get my money. Wow. Okay. I know what they're thinking, and they are not fooling me. Well, they did do a remake of the Pokemon movie. Okay, but it's one. not made by Disney. Yeah, but it's Nintendo. And is it Wonder Wonder Bro? I forgot. I don't remember. <laughs> but anywho, but anywho. In today's episode, we are going to have a discussion. Uh, said discussion is going to be on Disney live action remakes and so on. I can say much. There's oh yeah, there's one thing I can say. Uh, this episode is sponsored by myself, Lag. Thank you so much. So you know what? This is going to be a broad stroke on what we really think. Uh, in all honesty, out of all the quote unquote remakes I've seen, um, the ninety four Jungle Book. I've seen one hundred and one Dalmatians, one or two Dalmatians, uh, a bit of Alice, um, a bit of what am I call this? Alice through the Looking Glass. Um, uh, not much. Like I've seen a bit. So my opinion is going to be skewed. And Silver, what about you? What have you watched? I've only seen Alice in Wonderland and The Lion King. That's it. Most of the time, these Disney remakes have come and gone without my notice. Okay, okay. And Tara, how about you? I mean, I lost count of how many I saw, but kind of like what Silver said, they come and go. I've seen them maybe once or twice, and I don't remember some of them. Oh, you don't remember what you watched? Oh, I remember what I watched. I've I th- I watched like maybe four <laughs> or five. Uh, all righty then. All righty then. Uh, okay, so you know what? Uh, I I guess spoilers are abound, but in all honesty, these are classics. Like if you haven't watched them, I don't know what to say. Just watch the originals; they're way better. <laughs> oh, true that. Okay, okay, okay. So let's go for the obvious. Why would they do this? Why would Disney spend money to do a live-action remake of a quote-unquote uh, classic that they have? Oh, uh, the, Silva. Yes, there. There's actually a line in the Zombieland Double Tap that that summarizes this quite nicely, <laughs> and I feel it is. I I'm going to rely on this line, it, henceforth. Whenever I wonder about uh, why a company or actor would do this. It the quote goes, drugs cost money. <laughs> the what what now? Drugs cost money. That's real <laughs> that's the only explanation. It it saying this I can both show my uh, my understanding and disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> alright, alright. <laughs> Makes sense? Makes sense. Oh boys. Uh, what about you, Tara? Honestly, I don't know why. I mean, like the first, I, like I can't really. I don't really got much to say. I mean, like back then when they had one hundred one Dalmatians for Glenn Close, it was all right. I mean, you know, back then we were young. But then after now they're just making so much, and I feel like they're just doing this to grab attention of the young people that used to watch the originals. Now want to watch it in the twenty nineteenth century or so. Understandable. Understandable. And personally, for me, I, I I think this is one of those quote unquote trends where it's kind of a wheel where uh, things that are old are going to be renewed. And in this scenario here, most of Disney's show are well, they're not hip and cool with the kids anymore. So they're going to make it hip and cool with the kids, y'all, my fellow. Uh, younglings. Yo, that's how I uh, interpret it. <laughs> oh, Dizam, dog. Yeah, yeah. That's really so whack, th- yo. That's, so that's how I interpret it. Because when you when you really look at it, when when you really look at most of the remakes, you know what? Uh, let's attack a... Not really attack. Let's go for a specific show. 
Let, let's go for a specific show so we can have an eye to eye comparison or we, we are on the same page yes that's what, that's what I want to say the Jungle Book the 2016 version the quote unquote dark one remember that one I remember I do. hearing of it yeah so <clears throat> they say that this one was going to try to mimic the book version of the same name yet still stick close to the classic 1967 version. But I don't know. Like, everything about the remake felt off. Like, they wanted to have that charm, that uh, zaniness. But having animals look like real animals don't really mesh with me. They don't have that expression they don't have really that um what's the word i'm looking for life Oof, you know what i mean yeah that too but i, I don't know it, it felt off for me when i saw pieces of it and mowgli the actor not bad but i felt like he was <laughs> you know honestly he was acting in a green screen yeah what about you silver well, I did not see The Jungle Book. I only heard about, well, that Christopher Reeve would play King Louis. Uh, oh, babe, yeah, I do. I, I want to walk like you. <laughs> uh, that was the best part of the movie, by the way. Well, I, here's the funny thing. I saw an animated version of The Jungle Book on Nickelodeon that was more what? true to the, orig- the, to the book than the Disney version. So if you're looking for, oh. dark, so again, even then, how can I say this? If you're looking to get more accurate to the book, you don't have to be live action to be more faithful. You just have to do a different presentation. And lo and behold, this one, which was visually darker than the original, it was true to the original. It was darker. It was more violent. Uh, Mowgli's departure was far more spiteful from the wolf tribe. Which when I think about there weren't there were no wolves in the uh, Disney Jungle Book, were there? They were. They, they were. He uh, the wolves were their parents taking care of Mowgli. But we barely saw them. They had a much greater yeah. presence in uh, in this in animated the book series? in this oh, animated yeah. special that was supposedly based on the book proper. So basically. You can make stylistic choices, but making something live action does not make it inherently more faithful, more real, or more mature. And to be honest, if I says, well, people take anime, uh, live action more seriously than animated, the kid was in a green screen room. 99% of this place was animated. It's just animated <laughs> in a style that doesn't make you think an- animated. I mean, there's probably sets, so that's kind of worth mentioning. Is it, though? Is it? Kind of, I hope. Maybe, kind but of, sort of. T- <laughs> what about you, Tara? Well, I I mean, I kind of enjoyed the Disney 2016 Jungle Book. I mean, like, I do like how they, the animals look. They look more realistic, but not that much expressive. I like the cast, too. Like, Bill Murray as Baloo, Ben Kingsley as Bagheera. It was pretty good. Even with Christopher Walken as King Louie. I mean, totally wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Although, it could have used more cowbell. <laughs> oh, yeah. To- totally, totally, totally. Oh, baby. But at the same time, but at the same time, it's like, do we really need a sequel, though? Like, do we really need a sequel of the Jungle Book, of this live action thing? Because I know there's going to be one coming. I don't know. That's the but, thing. Well, to wait, me, there was. I, al- sorry, wait. I'm sorry, but there was already a sequel to the Jungle Book that was live action. Oh? Uh, are you talking about the 94 one? Um, I do not know. But you, probably yes. Was it that long ago? Uh, it was done by Jason Scott Lee. If I knew who that was, I would I would be impressed. He's the Bruce Lee lookalike, kind of. <laughs> well, I think I don't know. I actually I'm don't just know. saying words. I, I'm saying words. I just like so. I kind of look like Bruce Lee. You're hired. Yay! <laughs> oh boy. 
But, but one more thing I actually hmm. want to point out too is that in the previews they build up so much hype and they show you most most footage of Ka. Although in this one, Ka is a female instead of a male, played by Scarlett Johansson. They show so much footage of Ka in the previews and then the trailers and saying, "Oh, Ka is probably going to be a big part of the movie." But when you watch the actual movie. Uh, she only appears in one part of the movie. You never see Kai again. It's like, so what was the point of showing them all in the trailers? You're like building up the hype, and then all of a sudden you only appear in one scene. For fur, in if for there <laughs> it's for for affinity users. Yes, yes, yes. You know what I'm talking about. You might say it's a con job. <laughs> Oh boy, but no, nah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe Jungle Book is not the right discussion for us. Like, it's not bad, but it's not great. There's a lot of problems with it, so eh. It's so, decent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Silver, you mentioned you watch Aladdin, right? No. No? No, he, ah. I think he said he watched The Lion King. Lion King. And was uh, Alice, yes. Lion King. You know what? Lion King seems to be hot right now. So, what do you think? Like, you watched it. You had, I think you have opinions on it. So what do you think? Well, I watched it. Uh, in fact, I watched it with a friend, and I heard about it from other friends. My other friends seemed much more hostile to it than than uh, I. It was sort of a spectrum. Some of my friends watched it and just despised it. Just couldn't stand anything about it. I watched. My other friend watched it and was just delighted. She had. I think because it, she's been going through a lot, just having something fun and lighthearted and something uh, just to take the mind off. That's all one is asking for. And it delivers on that. I was middle of the road. I was like, I was, I understood it. I had, it was a fine time watching it. Nothing, you know, offensively bad. But the original is better. <laughs> well, are you talking about Hamlet? Well, yes, that too. <laughs> but the cartoon version, the animated version, I think... You know, it's funny. Terminology is everything. If you say the cartoon version, it sounds hokey. If you say the animated version, it's artistic. I, yeah, that, that's a problem there too. And in all honesty, when... I, I think this day and age uh, where everything needs to be hyper-realistic, people don't or people can't appreciate the classics or can't appreciate 2D animation because let's, let's, I'm just going to jump ship and swerve off course because uh, when they were testing the Miraculous Ladybug, they were doing it in 2D animation, um, animation done by Toei Animation, and it was awesome. It looked great. It was fantastic. But in the end, they switched it to 3D animation and we got what we got now. And I think I've shown you and Sappy about this. And you guys clearly love the 2D version better than what we got now. I think it's been a while. Mostly, I just try to block Miraculous Ladybug from my mind. Because, you know, you're sick! You're sick! Oh, yeah, I can oh. personally vouch for that because, you know, my first Miraculous Ladybug was the one we discussed where you got that, um, what was it, Black black Cat? Where, you know, oh, yeah. he's strapped onto something and mm. he's blindfolded, and, you know, yeah. shall I continue? <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, I, I have good news for you guys then. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. continuing on to uh, Disney, I, I feel like nobody's really enjoying 2d anymore like 2d is a dying art well i mean even talking with the production staff from my little pony uh they love flash the animation not the pony i was gonna say <laughs> uh they love it because you know you can go back you can change things you can reanimate or reference frames computer work gives you so much greater control and flexibility than classic 2d animation where it's drawn by cells and you have to animate it out and photograph the cells. Oh, just after BabsCon this past year, friends and I went to the Walt Disney Museum and we got to see this huge machine that was used to photograph all this. It's stunning. It's it's immense. It's also heavy, very heavy. I can sympathize with the desire to have the 
flexibility of rendering out an animated sequence rather than having to photograph it frame by frame. It is a labor of love, but love hurts. Love see that, see that. hurts. And I think I should rephrase my wording about 2D animation because uh, in this day and age right now, like Silver mentioned, uh, flash animation looks flat. Um, when, when I mean 2D, I, I mean stuff we see like from My Little Pony, uh, even the My Little Pony movie, or even uh, the Teen Titans Go... Yeah, the Teen Titans Go movie. Uh, that was in the same vein as the show. So, I think people don't really appreciate that anymore. Even with uh, the DC animated movies, those look good, those look great. And I like it. I love it a lot. But people, the general audience... They feel. I feel that whenever they see those kind of things, they think it's a kids' movie. It's a kiddie, uh, for kids for a little Timmy to watch and shut up and kind of thing. I feel that, and it's not fair, and it's a bit sad. And with this year, with uh, the live action movies, I I feel like most of them are getting a hit by this because when you look at it. There were nothing wrong with the Jungle Book or even the Lion King, even Aladdin, Dumbo, and so on. I, I could just list whatever they have here. But I, I don't know. Like, what do you guys think? Am I wrong? Hmm, well, I don't know if it's as simple as right and wrong. It's entertainment. Because it's not really up to the people to decide. It's the company or you know, basically it's the company's decision or whoever's head in charge just be like, you know what, no, we're not going to do this no more. We're going to do all this because, you know, this is the new age, not the old age. I am the future. I'm above the law. But uh, you did bring up a good point, though, Norman, about um, kids, you know, thinking that, you know, since it's live action, but with a Disney movie, it's going to be all, you know, kid friendly, but then it gets very dark. And then the parents are going to be like, well, I thought this was supposed to be a kid's movie. This is very dark. And the reason why I bring this up, because actually one time, when the Netflix exclusive movie Mowgli, Legend of the Jungle, came out, and I saw it, and mm-hmm. it was really dark. Really, really dark. Like, there was a, a like, yeah, I won't go into details, but it was just really dark. And then my cousin, who has a, who had a, well, I mean, he's two years old now, but back then, he was one years old. And my cousin asked me, hey, is this a good movie I could watch with my son? I'm like, no, you don't want to watch this. He's going to have nightmares. <laughs> yeah. But that's Netflix. That's that's Netflix. And Disney has the PG-13 thing going on for it. Ah, boys. But I I do have to say that uh, shows like Maleficent uh, do twist the story a bit and make it a rather interesting story. Uh, You guys know the synopsis for Maleficent, right? More or less, yeah. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, so long story short... Too Maleficent late. falls. <laughs> Sorry, I'm never gonna. I'm never gonna pass that up. Uh, Maleficent falls in love with the king. King betrays her. Uh, she swore vengeance, put Aurora to sleep and whatnot. And in the end, uh, Aurora treats Maleficent like a mother and breaks the curse. Something like that. I I I don't really know, but that's an interesting twist to the story and. In situations like that, I don't really mind because they're subverting expectations and telling a new story. So that's cool. But for shows like The Jungle Book where nothing's changed, no, no, no. Jungle Book is a bad one. Lion King. Uh, for, for shows like The Lion King where nothing changed, including the uh, cinematography, that, like, why would I even... If it's just a shot-for-shot remake, yeah. Yeah. Like, why would I even watch it? Like, if it's just going to be a shot-for-shot remake, I might as well watch the original. The original was fun. And expressive. My thing with yeah. the Lion King, it, it looked... It did look great. The the it look, You could believe that these were real animals at times. But because real animals yes. do not express themselves the same ways as humans... They were so busy focusing on making it look 
accurate to life, they forgot to make it alive. So there was no expression. There was no real energy to the characters. There are a few things I liked about the live action Lion King, though. Like, uh, in the wild, I do know my animals. In the wild, hyenas are obviously not that stupid. And instead of a male leading the pack, it's a female, which, you know, in the live action, they actually nailed it how Shenzi is the leader, and they're not all stupid. They're actually very clever. And even when Scar comes into the scene, they're all like, yeah, we're going to eat you instead. And it's like, yeah, you know, I kind of like this because in the. In the anime, 1994, they're completely stupid, and it shows that, like, the hyenas have no leader. And at least here, it shows that they're very clever, and they're not stupid. <laughs> uh, there's, there's subtle changes to make things more appropriate, but in the end, if it's just going to be a shot-for-shot shot remake, why not just remake The Lion King in animated form? Like, Or re-release the original in theaters, because they did do that one time. Oh yeah, there's also a theater, Broadway and stuff. I heard that was popular. Oh yeah. I actually remember one time they re-released the 1994 Lion King in theaters. And I went to go see it in theaters because that's how much I love the Lion King. And uh, I keep going back to Lion King because I feel like that the Lion King is the biggest disappointment. Because there's even one scene that really disappointed me. And that's when Simba looks up at the stars, you know, he misses Mufasa. And then when he lays down, you see the tuft of fur flying away. But instead of going straight to Rafiki, we have the whole montage of, you know, a bird grabs it, puts it in the nest, then it falls, and then it goes into a river, and then a giraffe eats it. And then later on, you see it in a roll of dung with a dung beetle rolling it around, and then it breaks into pieces. Like, did you really have to drag that on? It's called fluff and filler. Did you know? That's the. That's not a word. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, see, I was trying to keep it PG, but Silver said it. <laughs> okay, I think Sweetie Pot's got something to say about that. <laughs> well, Sweetie Pot is welcome to chime in, but it's still a medical term. So, anywho, go oh, to I was going to say, like, Kira. why though? Why was it necessary? I mean, like I said, I like that it looks more it like look. I like how it looks realistic, but it's not that expressive. And especially, like, I know I'm going on about Lion King because The Lion King is one of my favorite movies. And then yeah, s- just I, seeing this, I'm very disappointed in it. I, I can agree. I can agree. Even though Lion King is not my favorite movie, I still can agree with you, man. And the thing is, when when you look at art that people do of the Lion King. They are so expressive. They're so awesome. Like, you, you can see Kid Simba. Like, people draw Kid Simba awesomely. People draw Adult Simba really awesomely. And then you see Nala. Oh my goodness. I never knew Lioness could look that great. Yeah. I feel like at times, too, it's rushed. Like, when Simba meets Nala, and all, instead of being like, wait a minute, is it really you? Who are you? That in the original, but in the live action, as soon as Nala pounces on Simba, Simba's like, "Wait, Nala? Simba, it's you!" Hey, be like, <laughs> "Wait, what? That was a bit rushed, don't you think?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the thing. one thing, the one thing that kind of that really disappoints me in the live action is in the 1994. They had the lesson where the past can hurt, but you could either run from it or learn from it. And you know, most Disney movies, it's like you know, follow your dreams of becoming a princess, or like in the Princess and the Frog. You know. I mean, hard work kind of pays off, but then you know many parents. But in, in that Lion King moment, it's like, you know, learn from the past. Learn from your mistakes. When the live action, they never address it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, here's the thing also. Because some scenes, some, like, some movies, uh, like, especially this one, they don't really... Okay, I can understand they want to kind of uh, make it their own. But at the same time, too, if it's a one-to-one remake, like, why even, right? Mm-hmm. And also, Aladdin. Aladdin has a few changes that are positive. Oh, don't even but... get me started on Aladdin. <laughs> oh, go ahead, man. Go ahead. It's the first you I mean, okay. I do like Will Smith as a genie. I mean, no one can ever replace Robin Williams. Mm-hmm. But at times, I feel like Will Smith is trying too hard to be kind of like Robin. Like, um, when he becomes prince and... Genie's flying around. I was like, "Oh, he's on fire, Genie! Stop! Someone stop me!" It was like, "Okay, I mean, it doesn't exactly work though with that kind of enthusiasm." I mean, it does have some good moments, but then there's the one, there's like a couple that drags on, like when Aladdin's introduced to the Sultan and just talking about jams, and it's like, "Okay, we move on to the next scene, right?" And there's moment of science, and then they bring up jams again. It's like, "Oh my God, this scene's still going!" And then moment of science again, and then they talk about jams again. It's like, "Oh my God, just get to the next scene already." <laughs> Oh, that sounds terrible. But I, I, I've seen reviews from the Nostalgia Critic about it. And 
uh, looking at his review and well, okay, let's just say this: Will Smith as the genie is not bad. When Will Smith, no, he's not. Plays, he's not bad. Like yeah. he, he's decent. Yeah. When Will Smith plays Will Smith, or well, when Will Smith plays the genie, it's good. But when Will Smith plays Robin Williams as the genie, that is where like, you know, you shouldn't really try to compare yourself to him. You have to kind of make it your own. And Silver, what do you have to say, man? Will Smith as the genie, it is true that when he plays it cool and easygoing, he's being his own character. Although one could also argue he's just Will Smith playing Will Smith. Which is not bad because we have what? Uh, Christopher Robin playing Christopher Robbins. Oh, sorry, not Christopher. Uh, Christopher Watkins playing Christopher Watkins. And you have Al Pacino playing Al Pacino. And what? Uh, God Voice. Who's, uh, uh, what? Wait, did you have God playing God Voice? Because I would totally be down right. for that movie. No, I, I'm trying to remember. Black guy always do God Voices. Morgan Freeman? Uh, yes, Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman playing Morgan Freeman. It's like, those are they're, they're their own role. Like, you have them, that's awesome. I want to have God play a role. I mean, that would just send the atheists <laughs> into a tizzy. <laughs> of course, the evangelicals wouldn't be much better off. <laughs> oh, God, man. oh, boy. What are you saying? Well, having a big name actor always seems to add a, an air of legitimacy to a production. Yep, but, that's what uh, DreamWorks do. But I do think that. If you're going to introduce a new actor into a role held by a classic, including Will Smith being rather burdened by the role once once played by Robin Williams, I, I don't envy him that, that situation at all. I think you have to let go of what people expect. And there were times, based mostly on a review I saw, that they tried to sort of force him to be like Robin Williams. And he's, he's not. you got to let that go. True that, true that. And like I mentioned before, Will Smith is not a terrible actor. He can act. He, If you give him the direction, he can go. But if you ask him to do... Oh, man. Yeah, if you ask him to do Robin, Robin William um, impression, like, you're not really using him to the fullest extent. That's true. And also, you're, you're not really honoring Robin Williams by trying to duplicate his presentation robin williams was a great genie because they said you know what improv just go off and okay this is kind of silly but my uh my high school theater teacher mm -hmm. he went to school with robin williams oh nice wow and he said that williams if you got him in a rehearsed role he was very nervous very uncomfortable not at all the, the dynamic actor we would come to know and love. Get him an improv, though, and by gosh, his, his energy was through the roof. That's why he was awesome in SNL. Improvisation, it was his strength, and that's what he brought to the genie. Will Smith, I don't think he's as big on improv. But also, if... You know what? I, I think he can do it. But the problem is, if they tell him, okay, Will, uh, do improv like... Robin, all right, great, 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 dude. I like. Well, that's just bad directing. Not... Yeah, so that's how I feel. That's how I. Well, that's what I think. But in all honesty, he's he can do good. Like he has charisma to do it. But if you don't give him the proper directions and if you tie him down, he's not going to do great. And we're talking about the genie. We're not talking about Al or even Jasmine yet, or even oh, actually, Jafar. Well, um... Yeah, I was going to actually talk about Jafar because those that Jafar, from what I've heard, like I've seen the movie and I kind of agree, everyone really disliked the way Jafar, well, at least the guy who's playing as Jafar because he's so monotone and not all expressive and not really that evil e either. And I can kind of see why. I mean, he's so monotone. Like, I mean, even in the trailers, even everyone was flipping around where he's like, bring me the lamp and I'll give you a best or whatever and a lot of people were really disappointed and you could tell it's like where's the pizzazz where's the emotion like more evil sounding true true but I, sometimes i think they have to tone it down a bit too like uh, how do i put this like i i feel like sometimes they have to tone it down to be realistic but at the same time too do you really want the villain to be toned down 
Like, what makes a good villain? Oh, a good villain challenges your your conceptions. You look at them and you see either how strong they appear or how much fun they're having. Like, uh, think of the Dark Knight and the, and Heath Ledger's uh, presentation of the Joker. It was Heath Ledger, right? I'm not getting all mixed up with names. Mm-hmm. Well, he really sold it because he he drove the idea of you know we're all one bad day away from this guy. We're all we all mm-hmm. have the capability for this, and he nurtured that. Jafar, the uh, animated Jafar, he was he was a snake even before he took on that suit, that form. You know, he you could see how charming and swoony he could be upon the king, the king, and then shift into this uh, just s- sneering, angry uh, fellow. He had the he had this shift. So when people say realism, I think that I don't know if they always know what that means. You keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. <laughs> realism, yeah, I. Th- I mean- at the end of the day is I think us, we, the audience understand the situation and see ourselves reacting in that way. Uh, And often, unfortunately we often tend to think of the pessimistic. So we think that uh, the negative is realism, but sometimes the hammy over the top villain is realistic because we see ourselves in them. Like, yeah, that's how I feel. Uh, Maybe, maybe uh, if you have to, you know, talk nice to a boss or client that you're not particularly fond of, you think, yeah, this is probably how Jafar felt trying to smooch up, smooch up to this uh, idiot king or sultan. <laughs> and let's face it, in the animated version, Jasmine's father was a dunce. Oh, yes. True that, true that. <laughs> Apparently he's a lot smarter in, in the live action, although they're all talking about invading a foreign country. Yes, but they don't really put too much emphasis on that. They mention it like once or twice, maybe even three times, but that's pretty much it. They don't really put too much story on it. Like, I know that there's one part where when Jafar actually becomes sultan and he tells the leader of the guards, we're going to go invade this country. And then later on, it's just brushed up. They never mention it again. Yeah, that's the subplot for the movie, which kind of not really needed. It's added a bit of drama, but yeah. Oh, boy. So uh, I guess there's positives and negatives to remakes. Like the positive I can see is something like Maleficent and also Maleficent Mistress of Evil, where they took the character and made it their own. And you know what? This could also go for Alice. You watched that one, eh? right, Silver? Mm-hmm. What do you think? Am I right? Well, it's true that they really did... Uh... They really changed Narnia and took ownership of it. Narnia? You, know, you mean Alice? No, it's pretty much Narnia. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Alice and Narnia. Alice and Narnia. It, I, in fairness, I think that is what it became. They tried to make it an epic story, a clash between good and evil. But Narnia did it first. Alice in Wonderland. Here's the thing: they did take ownership and they did try something new with it. But so, but. Just because something's new doesn't mean it's good or that it's the right idea. That's the appeal to novelty fallacy. Mm-hmm. And so in this case, Wonderland has always been this place of nonsense. In trying to create this clash with the Red Queen, you are giving it sense. You are giving it direction and choice and cause and all that stuff. And that's not Wonderland. So it goes two ways, I think. Yes, you could try something new and be proud of the fact that you tried something new. Never want to squelch innovation. But just because you're doing something new doesn't mean it's going to be the it's going to turn out the way you want. Mm, and I think that. we must we must brace and accept for that. Because here comes my little pony G5. Ah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So Oh no, I'm hitting it where it hurts. <laughs> so Okay, um, let's head to the future a bit with upcoming releases. So, All right, we're going there. Yeah, we're going there, man. We're going there because um, coming at the at, in November is Lady and the Tramp. 
with CG dogs. Yeah. Well, I think some of the most, well, well, I wouldn't say most, but there are some parts where I think the dogs are real. Yeah, I mean, parts of it, but certain parts like the yeah, like parts of it. thing. I mean, you can see in the preview, like when um, Tramp is jumping from one truck to the next and he does a little slip, you could tell that's CG. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, Lady and the Tramp is available on Disney+. Plus. Yes. Yes, I, I believe that's coming out next month. Mm-hmm. That's why I said November 12th. Ah. But still, uh, do they really need to? Like Lady and the Tramp, the classic was pretty awesome. And the, okay, you know what? <laughs> uh, in this day and age of PG era, I, I'm sure that the Siamese cats are going to be uh, nits from the scene. Or nits from the Probably. Movie, Actually, yes. I, heard, I heard that they were getting removed. Yep, yep, yep that's... Yep. Nixed from the scene. Oh, I'm not good with the technical terms. That's okay. <laughs> Lily B. Uh, although, you know what's funny? The woman who, who uh, sang it, mm-hmm. who provided the voice, is, plural, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. way back in the day, she did a video explaining how she di- how she sang with herself. Oh. And I can't, I still remember that. She w- She didn't seem at all self-conscious about the accent, which is... Unfortunately, a hallmark of my childhood. <laughs> I appreciate the technical skill they did in duplicating a person's voice to, to serve for two characters. But I also have to acknowledge that it was very insensitive at the time and really has no right in any entertainment nowadays. But at a time when it was 1955, it was, okay, nobody really cares. It was funny. Well, here's the thing. I could expand this much further. Uh, the next video, by the time this podcast goes live, I mm-hmm. will hopefully have published a review video of in, the cartoon Inhumanoids. Mm, okay. And I make the point there that there is some very, very uh, racist, sexist uh, commentary in there. And oh, at my. the time, you don't think about it. You, you're a kid. You don't question these things but it, it's there it's in your brain it's part of your mind now so up to that's it. actually a good point <laughs> but i guess that actually leads into one aspect we haven't talked about remember it i have not seen uh beauty and the beast live action but mm-hmm. i have uh heard the discussion that uh what is it the gaston's cro- crony they heavily implied that he's homosexual, and that his that is true. That his service to Gaston is based out of a sort of romantic devotion, although I would argue a misguided romantic devotion. Yeah, and I don't know, man. Like, is it me or is every movie trying to insert a quote unquote gay person or a uh, difference? You know what I mean? Like, is it me? It's not you. It is... Yeah, it's definitely not you. Uh, there's... how to, Case in point. We're actually going outside the Disney remakes on this example. How to Train Your Dragon. Uh, the, the, the helper Viking, you know, the right-hand man who's missing his right hand. Uh, Gobber? Gobber. Yes, he says, uh, you know, this is why I never got married. Well, that and one other reason. Mm-hmm. Heavily implying that he himself is homosexual. And, and sorry. well, it, it it's an implication, and yet when you ask, okay, what really what impact does that really have on his character? Well, he didn't serve stoic out of it. I can tell any romantic devotion. He's just a, a trusted friend. So when you change something about a character, or you you make a you make it a point to highlight their sexual uh, their sexuality. Does that really have any bearing on the story, though? Because I get uncomfortable with you say, well, this person is homosexual. Well, okay, Dumbledore, Dumbledore is saying Harry he might have been homosexual. Mm-hmm. I don't think he helped Harry out of any romantic interest. I think he, he cared about him as a young man. Mm-hmm. Keith from Voltron, a legendary yeah. defender. He is very much uh, homosexual, but I don't think he looked out... Are you out... sure Keith? Are you no. not talking about Shiro? Uh, Sh- Shiro. Shiro, I'm sorry. Shiro. Yeah. He, he looked after Keith, I think almost as a big brother figure, 
not a romantic interest. True that. When you throw, when you just say, by the way, this character is gay, it's like, okay, is that a motivation? Is that uh, an influence on the dynamic? No, it has no bearing. Then I feel like you're just doing this to raise, well, nothing nothing gets you uh, attention or spotlight than contra controversy. And people are instantly like, oh, they're making this character homosexual. Oh, does it change anything? No, but they're homosexual. Yeah, but does it change anything? No! That, that's the thing that I'm feeling. Like, okay, I, I, I'm in Asia. I'm in Malaysia. Uh, a mostly prominent Islamic country. And homosexuality is kind of a big no-no. But in all honesty, the more you force it down, or the more you highlight it, the more you force it, like, does it serve a point? Like, I, I don't know. Maybe, okay... I, I don't think I'm being censored in my views, but if you're gay or bi or if, let's just say LGBTQ, that, that doesn't mean anything. Like, in terms of story, like there's that, that does not affect the story as a whole unless it's going to be a major part of the plot. But if it's not, then, ha like, uh, who's Gaston's friend? Like, he's having a hard on for him. I, I don't know. That, does it change? I I wouldn't go that far. If you if you want a hard on, you have to watch the animated My Little Mermaid with uh, <laughs> that one infamous scene. Oh, you mean the tower? Uh no, <laughs> no, the wedding with the priest. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my! So yeah, everyone says they're so wholesome. No, sorry, we we added uh, a little something to make it not so wholesome. So bad. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. But, but no, I'm uh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I think we could basically sum this up in the same attitude with which we often react to romances in films. If you're just arbitrarily throwing in a romance, homosexual or heterosexual, is it in service to the story? Is it naturally evolving from the story? Or is it just tacked on and feels out of place in the story? True, that, 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 that I, I totally agree with that because, oh man, people are going to hate me for this, but remember in Endgame where the girl power scene happened? Oh, where all the, the heroines of the Marvel Universe came together? Yeah. To me, I felt like I understand I'm being manipulated here. Oh no. I can see marketing going on here. And did it help the scene? No, not really. No. Is it me? Well, another thing, too, is that they're doing a few changes to upcoming movies. Like, I know for the um, Lady and the Tramp, the, the small terrier, I think his name is Jacques, mm -hmm. they're changing the character to the female in the live-action one. Hmm. And in Mulan, they're getting rid of Mushu, and I know a lot of people made a big deal about it. It was like, the movie hasn't even came out yet. Calm down, people. Let's wait until we, we <laughs> watch it. Well, honestly... Mushu probably wasn't a great representation in the in the animated form. I confess, I never actually saw it. It was at the, it was really? at this phase of my life. Movie? Yeah, I I need to catch up. Wow. Hey, I can't watch everything. Although maybe it's good Safi is here because she'll be like, "Aha! You haven't seen Mulan. That gives me reason to go." Ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> You know what, Norman? Take a note of this. Dishonor on your family. Dishonor on you. Dishonor on your cow. <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have a cow, man. <laughs> you will. What? Are you gonna? Are you gonna buy me a cow? I mean, I'll get you a, a Pokemon that's kind of like a cow. Oh, what a moving gesture! <laughs> I hope people at home get that reference. I think they will. <laughs> Did you gonna uh, buy me a cow? What? <laughs> I can't. Yeah. Do you, you do know you what? At, do you folks at home hear what I have to work with? <laughs> no comment. No. Do they? Do, I think it's more. Do they hear what I have to deal with? Because you with your great balls. <laughs> oh, I. Hey, you you caught and handled them well. Oh, yes, and everyone witnessed that at BC that I had you by the balls. Yes. <laughs> Oh god. Oh boy. So anywho. Yeah, we uh, were talking about wholesome Disney movies and we <laughs> <laughs> We're not wholesome. 
Oh yeah. But you know what? <laughs> I I love how Norman agrees. Oh yeah, you're not wholesome. Ah, <laughs> oh, why did I bring you on this show? Because I love you all. Oh boys. But you know what? Uh, I, I'm excited for Mulan. And <laughs> it, it it's kind of biased on my end. And that's because one of my favorite quote unquote YouTubers is going to be in it. A YouTuber? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he is also a professional actor named Jimmy Wong. Uh, th- do you guys know the YouTube channel Rocket Jump? No. Nope. Afraid I don't. Uh, do you guys know uh, Freddy Wong? No. Nope. Sorry, I'm no good at this. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, long story short, uh, Freddy Wong. <laughs> uh, Freddy Wong is uh, one of the earliest uh, video effects YouTuber to be around. Uh, he does a lot of video game in real life things like Rocket Jump and whatnot. And he was quote unquote popular. Uh, the only reason why I'm excited for Mulan here is because of his little brother, Jimmy Wong. And Jimmy Wong will be playing the role of Ling, uh, the three compatriots that join Mulan. He's the tall guy. Ah. Yeah. So I- I'm just in it to see him act. That's all. I, I don't really care for the movie. I just want to see him. Uh, that's-, that's my view. So, yeah. I see. Oh, uh, boy. I mean, I know if they ever made a Bayonetta movie, you'd be watching that. <laughs> never. They will never. Bayonetta's too hot for that. <laughs> oh, come on. Angelina Jolie is Bayonetta? Nah, can't be Angelina. I mean, they made her as Lara, Lara, Lara Croft. Yeah, but that... Man, I'm confused. I'm confused. I'm silver. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. But you know what? I'm looking down the list of upcoming movies. The one that got me is Lilo and Stitch. What? They're doing that? Yeah. Yeah, they're doing Lilo and Stitch. Why? Look, here's the thing I... Oh, all right. I'm asking why. Because drugs drugs cost money. (laughs) (laughs) But... I mean, that's not even... Forgive me, folks, but that technically I don't consider to be a classic just yet. It hasn't been out long enough. Um, It's came out in 2002 well whoop de doo <laughs> oh it came out in 2002 tell me when did Snow White come out uh 1937 and technically they're doing that too yeah that's true <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> the thing that confuses me though is they're kind of doing two movies based on Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs because we see here there's going to be Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and then later on there's going to be another one called Rose Red based on Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. <laughs> oh, Maybe, boy. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. But one way or another, I just think to myself, a classic is something that has been around and is part of the vernacular. And I don't think Lilo and Stitch is at that point yet. In all honesty, I feel like Lilo and Stitch has been there. Like, uh, the movie came out and then it had its own uh, direct-to-DVD and its own series and also an anime about it. So I think that Lilo and Stitch here does have a lot of backing. But in terms of its own strength, like Lilo and Stitch, the 2002 Disney movie, I don't know if it has enough legs for it because what made Little and Stitch awesome was Stitch the alien like which uh, who could be fully realized as animated and will be again if this is a live action he'll be a CG alien yeah and oh my god I and I I feel like they should they shouldn't even have touched that and make a live action it's fine just the way it is true well, I'd, ar- I I'd argue I'd argue all these movies were fine just the way they were. I, I, I guess Maleficent kind of changed things a bit, made its own story. So yeah, I, but now there's Malef. There's a new one that recently came out, Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. Um, and from what I've heard, it's not really the greatest. Uh, I've seen it, and I, I kind of like it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but I, I had a good time with a date, so yay. Well, uh, and then. That's excellent. Uh, but okay, is Maleficent, however, the exception to the rule 
as it's the probably one of the few stories that actually tried to do a very big change on the perspective. Most of these others that I'm aware are, are basically point for point retellings with only minor variances. I have to say yes, Maleficent is the exception to the rules because they changed a lot of things to make it its own. Like you mentioned earlier on before, Silver, uh, good on them for trying something new. And as time goes on, okay, there's a few tweaks here and there, but there's no huge changes to the story. The Jungle Book still the, uh, the Jungle Book's ending is still the same. Uh, Beauty and the Beast's ending is still the same. Christopher Robin is something different. That's why I know. Uh, Dumbo, if I'm not mistaken, is still the same, right? Uh, I'm not sure myself. Although, yeah. I, I will point out one change in uh, in Beauty and the Beast may have actually been worse. Because mm. if you think if you think about it, it's incredibly dark. Uh, apparently, as part of this spell, the townspeople forgot their friends and family who were in the castle. And so mm. f- whole families were separated by this spell. And you just realize, wow, whoever cast that curse, the... F- Sorceress or fairy godmother, I forget. Kind of awful. Witch, well, apparently, definitely a witch. <laughs> Substi- substitute a letter for the W, if you know what I mean. I, 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 I. Uh, that's a pretty awful thing to do. So sometimes changing just a little detail can yield a much different tone to the story. Um, call me ignorant, but could it be that change was something from the original, like the original book that it was based on? Oh, well, Disney, from the very beginning, Disney has always changed something. Now, I haven't read the original Beauty and the Beast, so I don't know. If they are going back, well, Grimm's fairy tales and the like were, (laughs) for lack of a better term, Grimm. (laughs) True that, true that. Oh, man. But you know what? We've been babbling on for a good amount of time. Uh, I'm surprised. But I think we're going on for like an hour now. Yeah, true that, well, which is great on us. I can babble quite a bit. Yeah, true that, true that. But okay, you know what? Let's let's put a footnote here. Let, let's give our final thoughts. Silver. Most of the time, I find that these remakes are unnecessary. You're taking a classic that's much beloved, and it's not. You're not changing enough to uh, warrant a re- being calling even calling it a remake. Maleficent may be the only one that really tries to be something new, something different, uh, a reapproach to a classic tale. And so bully on them, good good for effort, but sometimes it's not the effort doesn't go out the way you think it would. So by and large, I regard the Disney live action remakes as unnecessary and drugs cost money. That's all it comes down to. <laughs> okay. Uh, boys. I'm a very, that's a very pessimistic view, it sounds like. But it's what I see. True that, true that. I mean, it could be true. Who knows? <laughs> what about you, Tara? Well, I kind of agree. I mean, all these live actions aren't really that necessary. I mean, if they really want people to, like, like, I understand, you know, all these old animated movies back in the 1990s and whatnot, you get it. It's old. You want to put, put some spice into it, but why not just do what you did with the classic Lion King? Like I previously said, they re-released the Lion King, and I even remember one time too, they re-released the original Beauty and the Beast in theaters, and I remember going to the theaters and watching the original 1994 Lion King in theaters, and it was great to see that in theaters again with the music and everything, and he was even quoted, re-quoting some of the scenes, and I just loved it, but really, I like, Maleficent, okay, it was okay, it was okay. I mean, I like how they were going into detail, and I, uh, Maleficent's story, and I, and I know that in the future, there's going to be a new Cruella movie with Ooh. Emma Stone, and I think they're going to be talking about, um, I think her, Cruella's past, I'm not sure, but we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> But that's just how I feel. I mean, I don't really think that these are necessary. All right, understandable, understandable. And as for me, as for me, I don't find this movie bad or good. If they're entertaining, that's good. If they're not, then I don't have to watch it. And most of the movies that I've seen, they're mostly, how do I put this? They're, 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 they don't, add anything to the formula 
uh, there, there's exceptions to the rules, but most of them, they don't add anything. And The Lion King is one of them where, okay, great, you updated the hyenas, you made a joke with Timon and Pumbaa and whatnot, but the original was still good. The original was still awesome. So if you're not doing anything new, changing the story and whatnot, I find it a bit time-wasting. And talking about very bad adaptations, um, Kim Possible, the live-action movie, direct TV. Back in the days, uh, backstory here, back in the days, I was a huge Kim Possible fan. I really, really enjoyed the show. Um, like Silver Quill is to Digimon, Kim Possible is to me. So uh-huh. I really like <laughs> Kim Possible a lot. Uh... Yes, yeah, you just singing. gave a plug. Yeah, just singing <laughs> for a bit. But when the season ended, when they come out with season four and it ended in a high note, yeah, awesomeness, awesomeness. But when the live action direct to TV movie came out, I was like, oh my god. So this is what it's like to make this. So this is what it feels like to. Have your childhood crush in utter disappointment. Oh, boy. So, yeah. I am not for it. I I will say that live-action movies are not bad when done right. Uh, recently, I seen Battle Angel Lolita, and that was not bad. It was, it was good. It was good. But... The others, though, uh, yeah, no, no, no comment. But anyhow, Silva, what are we going to do next week? Well, one, I think we're going to get you some therapy because you sound truly heartbroken. <laughs> I mean, there's it, a lot we, wrong with me. I wish I can it. have therapy. All right, we'll get someone to get you a hug. Oh, me that, hugs. That's a, me like you. That that's a start. What? Wow! Wow! I, I, this is getting very, very dark. <laughs> it's all your fault, Disney. <laughs> Can we? Should, should we call the Brothers Grimm? No, no, thank you. Maybe dig up their corpses. I don't know. <laughs> no. Anyway, next I, week. I made it even darker. Hey, uh, we are going to return to My Little Pony and talk about the episode between darkness, between dark and dawn. The oh. Celestia and Luna retirement journey episode. Or vacation episode. It's a preview to their retirement. Uh, or we can call it the episode where I make an appearance. Oh, really? Oh, there is a giant turtle with the foliage on its back. Oh, yeah. True, true, true. That's true. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Th- that will be next week's episode. So, s- stick around. Be entertained. Um, I hope you enjoy this one. Wow. We, we really babble a lot on this one. <laughs> I'm surprised. What? It's, well, it's a very broad topic with much to discuss and reflections of the larger culture, I think. Yeah, true that, true that. But anywho, uh, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at damagesregime.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver Quill, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on YouTube just do a search for Silver Quill or After the Fact and I shall appear. Uh, you can also find me on uh, DeviantArt and Twitter under MLP Silver Quill. You can also find me on Patreon, MLP Silver Quill, and my new Kofi account uh, under just Silver Quill. And every Wednesday, you can find me posting an editorial or comic review on Equestria Daily. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And Tara, what about you? Well, they can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, or Twitter, or YouTube under the name Torterra1324, or they can just do a simple Google research of my name, and I'll pretty sure be on all those platforms. And they can also search me up on Patreon, where I also under the name Torterra1324. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And also, please subscribe to Radio on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLive.com. Links are in the show notes. And if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show, 
with every support you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content and a huge thank you from me talking about thank yous i would like to thank amy lucky knight master black tristan and also jeffrey thank you so much guys you have been great so anyway i have been norman sanzo i am cecil Requil. and i am the tortera and we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the nbs show see ya adios bye bye Oh, actually, this just came into my mind. Disney owns 20th Century Fox. Does that mean they're going to make a live-action version of Anastasia? You know what? You, you know what? I would like to see that. In all honesty, yeah. I would like to see that because Anastasia, when it came out, it was pretty realistic in terms of its movement and whatnot. And it was pretty dark. So, why not, right? Yeah, well, we're already out of time. Quick, turn on the music! I already cued the music. The music has been cued, but I want to see Rasputin's head collapse into his chest again and see how kids react oh, to God. that. <laughs> the horror! Hey kids, remember when you wouldn't be quiet on the bus? Here you go!